Hey guys, this is Emily Point. Today's topic is postpartum thyroiditis. Uh, this is a very important topic for ESMLE. Um, I've been discussing how ESMLE will confuse you with this and other thyroid diseases. They just give you positive antithyroid antibodies and uh, you get confused. Okay, so let me start. Okay. First, remember postpartum thyroiditis is just they give the history a mother a postpartum history very important maybe up to six months it can be up to six months but usually up to starts from few weeks to few months it runs in a triphasic pattern the initially they will have a features of hyperthyroidism this is very important hyperthyroidism is very important than hyperthyroidism though some of the women can return to normal or hypothyroidism but very important point what you need to remember is hyperthyroidism they give the history of a postpartum look for a postpartum postpartum then uh, look for a hyperthyroidism feature okay and right so they give the history of after delivery after delivery after a few months two months back she delivered a baby all these things blah 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 everything was normal they give the long history to confuse you okay remember hypothyroid symptoms occurs transiently about two to six months postpartum okay uh, it's not immediately after delivery it takes up to six months that's very important typical symptoms include fatigue irritability nervousness palpitation heat intolerance look at these features these are the features of hyperthyroidism so forget about hyperthyroidism try to concentrate more on hyperthyroidism with postpartum uh, postpartum thyroiditis okay one who tests positive for thyroid antibodies okay the important thing what how they will confuse you is they will give thyroid anti thyroid antibodies positive so you might be thinking you start thinking of Hashimoto's thyroiditis to differentiate it from Hashimoto's thyroiditis Hashimoto's thyroiditis uh, doesn't have hyperthyroidism it says it ha it presents with hypothyroidism that's very important though the antibodies are same the titer is little bit very high in Hashimoto's compared to um, postpartum but they will not give the titers they will give antibodies positive that's it so what you need to look for look for the features that's very important history of postpartum that's very important okay uh, associations so it's seen usually in the women who are type 1 diabetes mellitus that's very important they give the history she has a diabetic type 1 mellitus she is taking insulin regularly and her glucose is under control and she became a, and she delivered a normal baby blah 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 okay how USMLE will confuse you remember this is a very important point they give the antibodies to thyroglobin is positive anti antibodies to thyroid peroxidase positive so you start thinking that it might be Hashimoto's thyroiditis no never just think of postpartum period up to six months second important is hyperthyroidism two important points okay postpartum and hyperthyroidism so these are the things what you could see in the Hashimoto's thyroiditis also okay lab findings remember the suppose a TSH could present high the hyperthyroid phase but warrants further testing to investigate for possible Graves disease um, a normal TSH with persistent symptoms could represent the shift between phases I told you the phases it runs in the three phases triphasic from hyperthyroidism to hyperthyroidism requires repeat testing four to six weeks later and elevated TSH at this time could indicate hyperthyroid phase okay so treatment look if it's very mild if the patient is comfortable then no need of treatment if it they give the option and she wants a treatment then you can give beta blockers for that if it's very severe go with the levothyroxine okay the next important point what you need to remember is uh, remember this asymptomatic women with a slightly elevated TSH who are planning subsequent pregnancies should consider a course of treatment until completion of family to avoid possible developmental complications in future children otherwise the treatment could be discontinued after one year of postpartum okay thank you so much for watching my video